Logan, my son, we are going to be building a shipping crate uh, for that recent build that I completed, a 48 scale skip jack. And uh, basically this is going to outline how, how we ship uh, a completed model submarine to make sure that it arrives where it's going in one piece. So let's get started. So as we're getting ready here, uh, we'll start with a few rules. The first rule is, if you don't need to ship it, don't. Um, the chance of something breaking during shipping is extremely high no matter how good a job you do in packaging it. So if you have the opportunity to hand deliver or hand pick up that submarine, absolutely take it. So rule number one, don't ship it unless you absolutely have to. As you can see, um, we are cutting wood. Rule number two, uh, cardboard works, but wood is better. Uh, if you're gonna use cardboard, definitely double wall, double box. Uh, make sure you get the, uh, the, the heavy duty cardboard boxes, uh, dual layer. Wood is better. Um, it is heavier, it's more expensive, but the odds of it showing up are gonna be a lot greater. Um, I've seen cardboard boxes literally run over by delivery trucks and still delivered. Uh, they're going to have a harder time with a wooden shipping crate, although they've still tried it. So cardboard is good, wood is better. about the model itself and on to rule number three and that is nothing at all moves. Everything uh, in this particular model has been taped down and secured so that it does not move, does not wiggle at all. The thing that you've got to understand um, and move on the assumption of is that the shipping company is going to do everything in its power to smash your model to pieces. It's going to be on trucks, uh, potentially on planes, there's lots of vibration, it will be upside down, right side up, on its nose, on its tail, and in many other positions that you don't want it to be in. Therefore, it's imperative that you secure everything inside the model so that it does not move. So all of my linkages, the drive shaft have been taped down, secured with this little chunk of foam that I've cut. I've got uh, some miscellaneous pieces, some hardware, and the video camera wrapped up in some uh, bubble wrap, and that's press fit inside, locked in between these two bulkheads so it can't move either. The only thing that might wiggle a little bit, and I can even tuck that underneath the bubble wrap, was that waterproof connector. So uh, in theory, unless something actually gets knocked loose, uh, nothing is going to move. So, rule number three, nothing moves. All right guys, on to rule number four, protect your delicate bits. Um, there are a couple of things that you are going to want to address specifically on the outside of your model. The most important of which is the aft and all of your rudders and dive planes. Uh, in this particular case, I've used some more of this closed cell insulation board that I used for flotation, uh, cut it into shape in this box shape and that reinforces the orientation of the rudders and the dive planes. I've taped it 
Um, that's locked them all in place. After that, I'm gonna do about four or five rounds of this half inch bubble wrap, shrink wrap everything, and it's gonna have uh, basically a three inch cone uh, around the stern there that's gonna protect it from damage. Likewise, the sail is another uh, area that is prone to breakage. And you can see I put two big sheets of that styrofoam up there. Take those together, it's completely rigid, protecting those periscopes, which are unfortunately not removable uh, on this model. And it's also protecting the uh, sail mounted dive planes. So that was rule number four, protect your delicate bits. All right, here is the model uh, prepped and ready for putting in the shipping crate. You can see a large bundle of bubble wrap uh, on the stern, protecting all of the delicate control surfaces. Uh, and the entire model has been wrapped in shrink wrap just to protect the paint finish. Um, if there's any abrasion or vibration, we don't want that wearing off. So let's get this dropped into our shipping crate and uh, we will start to put everything in there in a manner that it won't move. All right, when you're packing uh, something, anything, investing in the right packing materials is also imperative. Uh, you do not want to kind of half-ass a packing job just because you're using whatever you happen to have lying around. Um, as you can see, I went out and I bought uh, lumber specifically for the shipping crate. Uh, I've got the big half-inch bubble wrap shrink wrap, packing tape. The other thing that I'm going to be using extensively here that you're going to see uh, is something really, really cool that I discovered a little bit uh, ago. This is called uh, Instapack Quick. And these are basically expanding foam pillows. Uh, so you put things in a shipping crate, uh, mix up the foam, it expands and locks everything in place. Um, not cheap, but uh, definitely worth it because it basically creates a custom foam shipping crate uh, that you would typically pay hundreds of dollars for, but for uh, something a little bit less than that. So I'm gonna start by laying down a layer of these in the bottom of the shipping crate, putting the display stand on, locking everything in place, and just adding more and more of these until everything is secure. These are what the packs look like when you uh, unfurl them. And basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to do two of these at the same time. And you uh, basically crush where the A is and the B is and you mix them back and forth. That mixes up the catalyst and the, uh, the foam, expanding foam resin inside. I'm going to throw them down in the bottom, put the stand on top, trying to leave about two inches of room between the bottom of the crate and the stand. And I'm going to try and do this all within a few seconds because you've only got about 10 seconds before this completely seals up uh, and solidifies. So let's see if I can handle this. So the stand is uh, in place and I can move this back and forth now, um, fortunately. Um, you, you can see how that foam expanded, formed around the display stand and that's basically locked it in place left to right. Now what I can do is bring my uh, model over, set it in place and start filling the gaps with more of these expanding packs. Here is the model sitting in place, and you see you've got about two inches all the way around the model, uh, around the front, to the back. It's important to have uh, room, which is basically rule number five. Uh, make sure that you have gaps between the edge of your model and the edge of your packing crate, particularly if you're going with cardboard because they will drop it on the corner of something sharp you don't want all that force being transferred through to your boat. So now what we're going to do, I'm um, going to add some more expanding packs and see how that locks it in. As you 
can see, I have uh, put the watertight cylinder in there. Now that is wrapped in about four layers of bubble wrap as well. Lots of spacing between the model and the shipping crate. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to sandwich it uh, inside the expanding foam front and back, lock everything down so there's absolutely no way that it can move. So you'll notice from what I just said that the cylinder is not in the boat. Now you're going to be very tempted to ship it in the boat because it's convenient and it takes up less room. Don't! That's the next rule. Never ever ship your cylinder inside your boat. Um, there is some mass to that and if that model is dropped on the end it's going to break free and then what it's going to do for the remainder of the trip is move back and forth, smashing everything inside your boat. So, next rule of shipping, never ship your watertight cylinder inside your boat. see this box is completely filled uh, with expanding foam and very expensive model bits. Um, in theory everything is completely locked down. There should be no way whatsoever for this model to move at all. Uh, we've got the model itself, the display stand, we've got the watertight cylinder locked down in the back. Uh, the main drive battery is sandwiched between two foam packages and then we've also got our radio in the front. The only thing left to do now is uh, include the paperwork, screw everything down, uh, and then we're going to get to markings. for shipping this out. I have got some fragile tape that's going to get marked around the entire box. I've got some this side up stickers. Got my waybill, uh, some packing tape. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this down and then I'm going to staple it to the actual shipping crate to make sure that this does not get lost. Um, so I'm going to take a few minutes, do all this. I'll give you a view of the finished crate. All right, there you go, everyone. The uh, crate is completely finished, marked, labeled, and ready for shipment. This will be going to San Antonio, Texas from Florida. Hopefully it will be an uneventful journey and uh, shows up safe and sound. Thanks for joining me. Uh, my name is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy. Hope you enjoyed this video. Visit my website, nautilusdrydocks.com. Got lots of great information, resources, articles, uh, kits and components that you can buy for this amazing hobby of RC submarines. Thanks again for joining me. Catch you next time.